the concert for New York City in Madison Square Garden five weeks after 9-11, Richard Gere stood in front of millions of viewers and said, we have the possibility to turn this horrendous energy we are all feeling from violence and revenge into compassion, into love, into understanding. The crowd booed him loudly as if to say, hey, boo the boy. We will not be caught dead acting like Jesus Christ. As if Christ only published concepts he wanted us to thump instead of experience. Granted, compassion is a wounded word. It gets banged around in the junk drawer. It is not an entitled driver. It would not survive in California. <laughs> compassion is often the last player picked. So maybe Richard Gere should have used the word rest to suggest we curb the poison of reacting so fast, but reporters insisted Richard Gere's proposal for love and understanding was the wrong time, wrong crowd, wrong message. I remember being 27, watching this feeling like some fathers do not tell their sons, I am proud of you. Like an entire city had learned the language of a well-disguised suicide, smothered in clever headlines and a swarm of stagey news reporters who failed to mention that a French man named Antoine Lettery lost his wife and the mother of his child, with whom he was madly in love, to the terrorist attacks in Paris last week. It was no more excruciating than what happened in Baghdad, Beirut, or the West Bank in the same 24 hours. The difference is that Antoine Lettery was the only man who posted a love letter for his son in the BBC, an open letter to those responsible for killing his wife. He looked directly into their hungry little pain bodies and told them, I won't give you the gift of hating you. Pussy. <laughs> Pathetic propagandist. Candy ass liberal. The insults that followed Antoine's moment of peace made me realize, y'all, that love, wounded a word as it may be, love can see all of it. But anger, anger is only concerned with what it thinks is fair. Narrow like the barrel of the NRA, like the blueprints to Russia's femininity, to China's childhood, to North Korea's private parts, to the bruised music of the Confederate flag state still singing like a drunk Englishman in a Tibetan monastery, loudly, louder. <laughs> I'm the overcompensator, the great annihilator. Cross me and you will know my pain. In each of us lives a small man with a good heart and an ego the size of Hitler, y'all. Why are we not fighting fire with water? Compassion will not make us lazy. It is okay to cross these borders. It is okay to stay awake, to love our own ignorance enough to look at it square in the wise guy, in the bright side, at the parts you are terrified to acknowledge because of, because of the work it will, it will definitely cause us. Because there's a chance we have been our own terrorists. There's a chance we are a failed relationship. There's a chance that every single day we are part of the reason millions of animals actually weep before slaughter. And we do not get to make up for it by watching adorable YouTube videos while stuffing our face with their death. Y'all, it is more than some sellable cliche that through these bodies we are rooted to the same source. That we've arrived on this planet to experience form. Now that we've had some time to do that, please, let us reintroduce the idea of questioning everything. Breeding. Excessive packaging. Identity. Finding people because they didn't have enough money in the first place. Anything impractical to the eradication of suffering, like denying refugees, like building a fence around freedom, like the oceans of care we keep for this world getting so landlocked in our chest that when the answer tries moving over all the goddamns built across our flooded hearts to surprise us with consciousness, it might look like we are spitting back entitlements at the earth. Stay still, 
gather your wits, find their ends, pull out the slack and say clearly, yes. Compassion, love, understanding, go ahead, call me another cliche, stick your violence in my meditation. The worst you can do to me for not joining the gangland war on Christ's behavior is shoot me in the look on my face, the one that says, I am not afraid to understand you or to stop you. In a new earth, Eckhart Tolle calls us the noisiest humans in history. Some things do not need to be fact-checked. Stop backing up so loudly, you, you screaming sirens on a cell phone, you heavy-footed upstairs neighbors, bloated bodies of anger belting out booze the size of Madison Square Garden, rejecting Richard Gere, who I know very little about, <laughs> but who I suspect, like most humans, is part saint, part fraud, and who reporters had to admit rebounded rather nicely when he acknowledged that what he had to offer was apparently unpopular right now, like taking away your child's assault rifle, like the color white, like the color brown, like supporting the man in Nigeria who found the cure for HIV. Unpopular is compassion, like a savings account in Greece, like the topic of trafficking Stockholm Syndrome all the way back from New York City to right here down the west of me, where I am determined to see all of it because I do not get to go blind again, not without carving the word coward on every pen I will ever use to point out how pain cannot digest love. It works the other way. My body no longer loves writing poems for mass consumption. It does not believe in blowing apart, but I am still right here behind its habits, stacks of grinding teeth and a mashed up forehead of rolling credits working to see all of it, which I suspect is more productive than giving you the gift of my hate. <sighs>